people are much savvier today about what it means to own the most track-capable Camaro ever. Total revamping of suspension. Carbon ceramic brakes from Brembo added. Aero elements optimized. And additional downforce obtained. When it comes to Camaros, there's none better than a Z28. Yeah, we got some work to do. way to properly fix one of these Z28 Camaros is to use another Z28 Camaro. So we bought two. And the nice thing about having two of these here at the same time is that they sound absolutely fantastic next to each other. Each one of these cars has what the other one needs. Good front end, but with quarter panel damage. Bad front end, but with a good rear end. The motor is already out of this one, so we can inspect what the damage is. And it is pretty extensive on this car. Essentially, what we're looking at is replacing two front frame rails on this car. Or using the rear quarter panel and wheelhouse off of that one to fix this one. The only question is how much damage is actually here, and that is gonna be the first thing that we are diving into. Yes, only one of these cars is getting fixed. You all know we have tons of projects going on right now, and well, we're a little bit broke, so we can't afford to fix two Z28s. All that because GM was too cheap to put one clip somewhere on this harness besides hidden away. Fun fact for the viewers, these Camaros are 22 millimeter lug nuts, which is very, very interesting to me. Every lug nut that I've ever dealt with is 17 and 19 or 21. Camaros are 22s, which is pretty funny to me. All these wheels are gonna have to get checked to make sure that they are straight, but this one is obviously the one of most concern being from that driver's side rear. <laughs> well, there you go. It's the first time I've looked at the back side of it, and yeah, we got some issues. So we will either have to be looking for a replacement on this, because I don't think that that can be repaired. over top of it. Yeah, yeah there you go. Yeah. Yeah, let me just take both of them out right <laughs> Not 
day. I wanted to wait until this was out to get a good look at the carnage to the rear subframe here. You can see where it just ripped and broke and just completely destroyed. But now that that is out of the way, we can go ahead, get a better look at the chassis, start diving into this quarter panel, see how deep the extent of the damage is. As you guys can tell, I have my work cut out for me. See you in a couple hours. With that quarter panel removed, we can see the extent of the damage. So this lower part here is gonna have to be replaced. That's kind of like an extension of the outer wheelhouse. You can see the outer wheelhouse here, which we knew was gonna have to be replaced. And then everything on the inside though, this right here is part of the outer wheelhouse. It kind of like goes over and under certain layers. So really the damage is as expected, which is good. That is absolutely what we were hoping to see here. So at this point, I'm guessing those that are paying attention or have any sort of auto body knowledge have figured out which car we're gonna be fixing. And it's the black one. Every single person that we talked to about fixing either of these cars, when we told them either front frame rails or a quarter panel, said quarter panel 10 times out of 10. And that's just because the front frame rails, that's a major structural part of the car where the rear quarter panel is essentially cosmetic. We are going to get the rear end out of the blue car, the white car that's wrapped blue, to go ahead and put into the black car. We are gonna leak down this motor here because it's gonna be for sale. We actually were contacted by the previous owner of the car, gave us all the specs for it on the cam package, valve train, so we know a lot about this drivetrain. It's low mileage, and as long as it leaks down well, this thing is gonna fetch a pretty penny because it's not very often that you see a LS7 with the TR6060 attached to it for sale at really any point. They're just very, very rare. Coming up just a little bit. Holy crap. Yeah, that's like a two. Mm. Another, another damn good one. We aren't cutting this one off either like we did on that C7 smoked video. <laughs> We're filming the whole thing. You guys are along the ride. We're not making any assumptions. Nothing wrong with a five. Another five. Another two or three. Three. Four. Another four. See, we didn't jump to any conclusions. We just let it play out and it worked just fine. Strong, healthy motor. Time to go ahead and throw the entire rear assembly into this car. We had to do a couple things beforehand, which luckily went pretty smoothly. This was a brake line. You can see where it's kinked just before the cut that I made. And luckily this line runs all the way over to a junction right there. So we were able to replace it, which is very, very nice. We pulled it off of the blue car. And then also the e-brake cable 
had sustained some damage, which doesn't look too, too bad. But the problem is that when you lay these next to each other, you can see that this one is actually like bowed out and it stretched the end of it. So the cable was damaged and I wasn't overly comfortable with just leaving it on the car, even though it probably would have worked. So we just had to remove this shield here, this shield here, and get up top to the junction that's right above that. So we are good to go. One thing that I hadn't mentioned in this video and I probably wasn't gonna do until I found some really, really cool stuff is some giveaways. You can see what we have laid out here. These are the door sill, just stick on strips that I think are pretty darn cool. I took both of them off of the blue car. We have two fender emblems and the trunk emblem look to be all the same proportions and everything like that. And then we have this cool bolt that came out of the rear subframe that as you can see is definitely not straight. So what we're going to do like normal, you have to comment down in the comment section for the bolt. You need to say, uh, get bent. We'll go with get bent down in the comment section. The Z28 emblems here. We had a viewer leave a pretty darn funny comment in Lee's first ZR1 video that said that his Z06 could smoke the ZR1 and blah, 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 blah. And as I responded to him trolling him, his comment was Z you later. So if you want one of these emblems in the comments, you have to comment Z you later. And then for these, we'll go ahead because of their stickers, you got to comment and say, cool sticker, bro. And I will go through after we give it a little bit of time and we will pick some people to send these to. Obviously, I bought brand new crush washers from GM. On a car like this, I wouldn't be trying to reuse crush washers. Coming down. The rear end is installed. The fluids have been checked. We bled the brakes. The wheels are mounted and torqued. Now you may be asking yourself what wheels because we had one bad one in that rear corner. You guessed it. There's no way that we could resist putting these neon yellow green wheels onto this thing. For the first time since this car has been here, we are finally going to be able to drive this thing. Well, that's not going to work, but let's go ahead and at least fire this thing up so y'all can hear it run. There's no way to effectively show it on camera, but it looks like in the wreck, the camber adjustment on this side got thrown out of whack. The wheel is actually rubbing on the strut, so it's not really moving really well. So we're gonna have to address that. All right, well, at least we're rolling now. Obviously, we were going to get an alignment on this thing anyway, but we might have to bump that up on the priority list just to make sure we know what's going on around the entire car with the suspension. So Curiosity got the best of me, and this is the set of wheels that was on this car. And you can see I knew that the way I stacked these, that these two were the fronts. You can see, actually, it's totally awesome how deep the recess is there. This one is the broken one, and I know where it came from, 
and look at how different they are. So even though these run a square setup on tires, I bet that the rims are different offset, which means that we need to throw this back on the lift real quick before I head home and see if that is the case because that would explain our issue. Oh no. Oh wow. Okay. All right, that explains it. Okay, so when I was mounting these tires, right? You see rotation forward, rotation forward. So these are the two wheels for this side of the car. On this side here, you have rotation going backwards now, but when it comes around to the front, it goes forward. Same thing, rotation forward. But take a look, you see the deep recess right there and the deep recess right there are both on this side of the car. Look at the difference. So this is a rear and this is a rear. And they are both on one side of the car because they mounted the tires wrong. So we are gonna have to do some switching around with the tires. Essentially, we just need to switch two. So we need to say, take this one off the front here and switch the rotation so that it can go on the back of the car here and then take that one, switch the rotation so we can go in the front of the car. It is super funny because right when I put these on, I noticed that when I walked side to side on the car, it looked different. And I thought it was because this side was missing the side skirt. So it looked like the wheel stuck out more, but you can kind of see where it lies against the fender flare there. And it looks pretty aggressive. Like it's got that tad bit of poke. And then you come around to this side and it doesn't have that. It's sunken in just a little bit and again it's just because of that offset so we'll get the tires fixed and we'll get this thing running and driving so we can do our first test drive now it is time for the part of this project that i have been most excited for cutting this quarter panel off Video. Is the camera on? Yes, yes, we have never had that happen yeah, before. Awesome. All right, go ahead, back up this way. Well, okay. Much harder to get off than anticipated, but well worth it the VIN plate from the donor Camaro. This is gonna get thrown in with the giveaway items that I already mentioned. And we'll bring back from the poor smoked video. You have to say down in the comments, I won't use the VIN plate for a stolen car. It's got holes drilled in it. It's got burn marks from sparks, but what it also does have is the Z28 designation right there. Very, very limited production. The only cars that obviously come with it are the Z28s from 2015. usually like to save this moment for once the car is actually complete but as you can see the placement's rather inconvenient for driving this thing
this thing will get a proper bath once it's not going to be sitting at a body shop getting all dirty and dusty but I mean, we can't be driving around a dirty car right and because we are so safety conscious here at scrap life garage we're going to put some reflective tape on the sides and on the back since technically by the letter of the law it needs it Diesel in this Carrington? Oh, they're just green pumps, okay. Z28's maiden voyage complete. That puts us roughly about halfway home on this repair. The mechanical side of things seem to be finished, but we still have a lot of body work to do, and we will be taking care of that in episode two of this rebuild for this Camaro Z28. Be sure to tune in, make sure your notifications are on for when the next video is gonna drop. There will be a few others in between now and then. We got some really cool projects going on. There's always plenty of stuff around the shop. We appreciate everybody tuning in and we'll see you in the next video.